was a time in every man's life when he's in an echoey room with a pot filter on a Friday and his students say to him, how do I know, do an order form when I've just got three tables? Now, there are times in your life where you do need just three tables, where you've got the situation that I'm demonstrating here, whereby one person can only buy one product at a time. It might be a car. In this case, uh, for this student, it might be gym memberships. Okay, now, a subform in this instance can be a handy reminder of what was on the original table. Okay, and that's what I like to use them for. Okay, so I've got this three table structure. Now, I've done an order form, okay, or rather a tutorial for an order form which relies on a system which in which you can buy multiple products in one transaction. Remember, this is one product, one transaction. Now, I've shown you how to do this before, but I'm going to show you how to do it again. I'm going to go into the person table and I'm going to feel for a picture of my member. Okay, and as usual, I'll set it to OLE object. Now, once I've done that, I'm cooking with gas. I'm going to save those changes. Now, remember working in Access 2013, and there is my friend Osama messaging me about my children. But I'm going to ignore it for now. We have work to do. Okay, now, I've got my order form here, which I used the wizard to make. And in a previous video, I did show you how to do that. Now, students have said to me, Sir, I get this fault and I can't see my form. And that's because you've made your footers too big. So don't make your footers big. Okay, let's make our footers just big enough to put those command buttons in later. Okay, now, on our order form, it's good practice to have your corporate header and footer at the top. Business details using the AA tool. AB tool if you want to put the date function in for today's date and your title of your form etc. But we're not that's not the purpose of what we're doing today. It's good practice to put any primary key in the header buried out of the way using the grid to line them up. Now this will only resolve to a number, but I'm leaving it like that deliberately. You'll see why in a sec. I'll do the same with this. Now I could have done two picture fields, but couldn't be bothered. Now any of these other for stray fields here, okay, we'll, we, we'd normally put those guys in the middle. Now remember the bottom is for your command buttons, okay, we've done that in a previous video. Now, once I've got my order form kind of structured like this, and I'm going to shrink this down so it like kind of looks a bit neater, and I'm going to shrink this guy down so it looks a bit neater, okay, again that was a subject of a previous video, okay, and don't forget that in this instance the product ID is just going to go to about there okay and i'll shrink this over as well now this is worth watching even on this dodgy table and nick will be in a minute to collect his pop filter so i'd better get a move on because it's friday and i've got a profit property to view oh very posh right then so in here i'm going to scooch this guy up as well okay give me a bit more space so you get the idea in the middle waving my hands at the screen there but you can't see it you will have all the things that are particular to this order now what we're going to do is we're going to make a subform with a picture for here and we're going to make a, just a normal subform here we'll repeat some of the information from the product table so i'm going to quickly drop out of this and i'm going to save the design of course now and then i'm going to go and i'm going to make a quick form for my person and i'm going to create this using the wizard again i can't believe i'm still doing this wizard and i only want in there person id and i want the picture okay in fact i could take all of it but no just for to make it a bit easier that's all i'm going to do i'm going to set it up in columnar and then i'm going to give this this is going to be my mrm sub person and the wizard was able to create my form actually thank you very much okay and the main thing is because it's part of it okay, and those fields are available we're cooking with gas now and when you want to move a field that's connected to a um a label that's connected to a field you have to kind of get it in the corner like that okay so i'm going to have that there and i'm going to have this the, these guys oh they've improved no they haven't i thought they'd improved it in this we're gonna have the person id at the top here now what i could have done i could have done actually and i might do actually on this one is i might have the surname and forename or at least the surname i'll just have to drag the surname in there and it, well you know you get the id it's up to you and it takes a very steady hand. Anyway, 
So I'm going to scooch that up and I'm going to scooch that up. Now we're not going to have any command buttons on this form because this form is a subform and what it's going to do is it's going to rest inside my other form. So I'm going to highlight all of that. Do that again and I'm going to scooch it all over. Okay. And then I'm going to. It's calling itself form one, but it won't be in a minute. I'm going to close that down and I want to change the save the changes and I'm going to call it FRM sub. And I've created it. Now the thing is, I'm going to have that nesting inside the order form for reasons which you'll see why in a second. So what I'll do is I will go into the order form in design view and I will use that tool there to create a form. And it's the only one available. So I click next, click next and click finish. And then in a minute, I'm going to resize it all. Okay. And you'll see why we're doing it. So I'm going to quickly go into form view and you can see I've got my picture now on previous tutorials. I've shown you how to get rid of these command buttons, but you know what education is about repetition. So we'll do it again. Okay. So I'll close this form and I'll save it. The, the person sub form and I don't need those navigation buttons. So I click the here left click, then I do right click and then I go to properties and then I make my record selectors and navigation buttons on no. And once I've done that, I save that. And you'll notice here now that when I open up my order form, okay, when I drop down someone, CC appears in there. And if I had a picture of CC, it would appear in there. Okay, and I can drop down and AA appears to, to number one. Do you get the idea? I'm sure. Okay, so the person ID appears and it changes. So I'll drop that down again just to confirm. CC. Okay, just go back and forward. And you'll see that the it changes. And you'll see that the surname changes. Yep, I've got to, I should say AA now. Go forward. Go back and it does and if you had a form the picture here now then i'll leave it to you guys but normally it's good practice because what it allows you to do in a gym is when you select a particular customer by their id you've got a picture there and you can look at them and go that's that person and when you select a particular type of class and it might be all coded you can have the class details appear in here in the sub form that's it guys not very pretty but we've gone over a couple of things it'd have been nice if i'd have had uh, an order form set up because you can do a file and save as but that might be the subject of a later tutorial and that's it guys remember that Matt Parker tutorial services were there to help teachers with their admin we're, the, we're there to help businesses get those IT systems off the ground without giving lots of money to big companies and we're there to help students with the coursework time to click X